Hey guys, so as you're gonna learn very quickly, in this course, we're gonna do a lot of graphing. There are graphs for almost everything in economics, and we're gonna learn to do many of them. Graphs, 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 graphs. And today you're gonna learn your first graph. Let's get started. Here we have a production possibility schedule for country B. Given their current available resources, country B can produce TVs and computers in various combinations. Now, while we can tell a lot from this production possibility schedule, we can also visualize opportunity cost and production possibilities by creating a production possibilities curve for country B. Here's how we do it. We begin by drawing two axes, one for each good that country B can produce. The vertical axis will be for TVs, the horizontal axis will be for computers. We're gonna take the production possibility combinations listed in this schedule and plot them on this frontier. At combination A, country B can produce 13 TVs and zero computers. At combination B, country B can produce 11 TVs and two computers. At combination C, country B can produce eight TVs and four computers. At combination D, country B can produce five TVs and six computers. At combination E, country B produces no TVs and eight computers. And at combination F, country B produces four TVs and four computers. With every possible production possibility combination plotted on this graph, we can now connect these production possibility points and create a production possibilities curve. This purple line represents the production possibilities curve for country B. Think of it as a visual representation of what they possibly can produce if they use all their resources efficiently. This production possibilities curve, or PPC for short, is comprised of each of the production possibilities for country B, and so represents the full capacity to which country B can produce. They cannot produce beyond this curve, given their current resources. If country B were to produce at any of these production possibilities listed, they would be using all of their resources efficiently, getting the most out of their resources to produce the maximum quantity possible. And so each of these production possibilities represents productive efficiency for country B, meaning they are producing TVs and computers to their full potential without wasting any resources. Every country would like to produce on their production possibilities curve. A country that produces inside of their production possibilities curve like point F represented here, is experiencing productive inefficiency. At point F, country B is producing four TVs and four computers. However, they are wasting scarce resources in the production process and could be producing more. The most common type of productive inefficiency is excessive unemployment. By having excessive unemployment, the labor of workers in the labor force is being wasted. Workers are willing and able to supply their labor and help in the production process, but they're not being utilized because they can't find jobs. As a result, a country will produce below their capacity and within their production possibilities curve. Let's say country B eliminated excessive unemployment and reached their full production possibility potential by moving from point F to point C on the production possibilities curve. By utilizing all of their resources, country B still produces four computers, but gains four TVs, boosting its TV output from four TVs to eight TVs. By becoming productively efficient, country B has reached its full potential to produce. A production possibility combination outside of the production possibilities curve, like point G, represents room for future growth. This is a combination of TVs and computers that country B currently cannot achieve given their resources, but they would like to achieve at some point in the future. Country B is either going to have to become more productive with what they have or gain more resources in order to reach production possibility G. We can also use production possibilities curves to help us calculate opportunity cost of production. Using the PPC provided, what is the opportunity cost of moving from point A to point B? By moving from point A to point B on the production possibilities curve, country B would reduce its TV production from 13 TVs to 11 TVs, freeing up resources and allowing it to boost its computer production from zero computers to two computers. What did country B give up to gain those two computers? The opportunity cost of shifting from combination A to combination B is two TVs. What is the opportunity cost of moving from point B to point D? Country B would reduce its TV production from 11 TVs to 5 TVs, but reallocate its resources and increase its computer production from 2 computers to 6 computers. The opportunity cost of moving from combination B to combination D is 6 TVs. What is the opportunity cost of moving from point D to point B? Now Country B is reallocating its resources to boost TV production and reduce computer production. Reducing computer production from six computers to two computers would allow Country B to reallocate its resources and increase its TV production from five TVs to 11 TVs. Moving from combination D to combination B has an opportunity cost of four computers. What is the opportunity cost of moving from point F inside the PPC to point C, which is on the PPC? Country B is simply becoming productively efficient. 
and in doing so, gains four TVs and is still able to produce four computers. And so, the opportunity cost of moving from point F, a point of productive inefficiency, to point C, a point of productive efficiency, is nothing, because nothing is lost in the process. They only gain by now realizing their full production possibility potential. Let's do another example. The production possibilities curve provided shows the various production possibility combinations of prisons and schools that Great Britain can produce given its current amount of resources. What is the opportunity cost of moving from point A to point C? Great Britain would be choosing to reduce its prison output from 21 prisons to 12 prisons to increase its school production from zero schools to 18 schools. The opportunity cost of moving from point A to point C is nine prisons. What is the per unit opportunity cost of moving from point D to point B? Remember, we're looking for units given up divided by units gained. By moving production from combination D to combination B, Great Britain would be reducing its school production by 12 schools, but increasing prison production by 12 prisons. And so the per unit opportunity cost of moving from combination D to combination B is one school per prison. At what point could Britain be producing more, but can't because it is being productively inefficient? Productive inefficiency in Great Britain is represented by a point inside the curve, point F. If homeschooling became popular in Britain, which point is more allocatively efficient, C or D? Remember that allocative efficiency refers to producing what society needs and wants the most. In this case, the social values in Britain have shifted away from public schooling and towards homeschooling, meaning public schools are not as needed as they used to be. As a result, we're looking for the combination that has less schools being built, meaning the more allocatively efficient point in this scenario would be point C. So there are two more things I want to cover in today's video. First, I want to talk about reading the slopes of PPCs. And second, I want to talk about shifting PPCs. First, let's talk about slopes. Do you remember this production possibility schedule for the country of Pretoria? <laughs> the opportunity cost of moving from combination to combination that we determined are listed below. But there's something interesting to note about the opportunity cost as we move from combination A towards combination F. It's increasing. It keeps getting bigger and bigger. So what does this mean and why does it happen? The country of Pretoria is experiencing increasing opportunity costs as it shifts production from combination A to combination F and vice versa. What this means is that Pretoria is losing resources in the production process as it converts production from sugar and towards wheat or from wheat and towards sugar. The reason why this happens is because Pretoria is geared towards producing one good and as it shifts to produce more of another good, it's not so great at it at first. So naturally, it's gonna be a tad inefficient in its production process. So what does increasing opportunity costs mean for the PPC of the country of Pretoria? When connecting the production possibility points together, we see that the slope of the PPC for Pretoria is outward bowing. A PPC with a slope that is outward bowing means that the country is experiencing increasing opportunity costs when it produces. Let's do another example. This is the production possibilities for country Y. It can produce various combinations of milk and butter given its available resources. Let's call country Y Arendelle. All right, stop singing, stop singing. I got you, I got you. Okay, here we go. In Arendelle, the opportunity cost of moving from point A to point B is one unit of milk. The opportunity cost of moving from B to C is one unit of milk. The opportunity cost of moving from C to D is one unit of milk. As it shifts production from combination A towards combination F, the opportunity cost seems to be one unit of milk at every production possibility. It also seems to be that way when we move from F towards A. It's constant. Every time it shifts from one production possibility point to another, the opportunity cost is always one unit. Plotting these production possibility points onto a graph for Arendelle, we can see what it means for the slope of Arendelle's PPC when it is experiencing constant opportunity costs. It's a straight, negatively sloped curve. A straight, negatively sloped PPC implies that the country is experiencing constant opportunity costs when it produces. Now on to the last objective to cover today. Can production possibilities curves shift? Yes. So what does a shift look like and what does it mean? Let's take the PPC for country B from earlier. Let's say country B is currently producing at point A, where it produces eight TVs and four computers. But let's say something fundamentally changes for country B, allowing it to produce more of both TVs and computers. An outward shift of the production possibilities curve would allow country B to produce at point A2, where it now produces nine TVs and five computers. A PPC shifting outward means the capacity for a country to produce becomes greater. Let's say the opposite happens. And fundamentally, something changes for country B, meaning they now will produce at point A2 at a combination of seven TVs and three computers. 
Country B can no longer produce the same amount that it used to of both TVs and computers because its full capacity to produce has contracted. The new PPC, which has shifted inward for the original, means that Country B's capacity to produce has shrunk. And as a result, it simply cannot produce as much as it used to, even if it's being productively efficient. So what shifts PPCs in this way? There are three determinants or shifters that can cause a change in a country's ability to produce and therefore shift its production possibilities curve. The first is a change in resource quantity or quality. The second is a change in technology. And the third is a change in trade. If there would be an increase in resource quantity or quality, an advancement in technology, or an increase in trade, a country will experience economic growth and see its production possibilities curve shift outward. If we see a decrease in resource quantity or quality, we see a setback in technology or a decrease in trade, we will see a country's capacity to produce contract and therefore see an inward shift of its production possibilities curve. Let's do some examples to put these principles in practice. In each of these examples, tell me which way the production possibilities curve will shift or at what point the country will now produce at. Let's say a massive storm in the North Atlantic Ocean destroys 75% of Scotland's oil rigs. Oil is a resource, and with less resources available for production, Scotland will experience economic contraction, meaning that their PPC is going to shift inward, and they simply will not be able to produce as many goods as they used to. Let's do another example. A PPC for China is provided. Let's say that Chinese engineers develop a new assembly line 2.0, doubling the productivity of Chinese workers. Now that workers in China are twice as productive, they can make twice as many goods, meaning that the production possibilities curve for China will shift outward, and they will see an increase in their ability to produce. In our next scenario, a production possibilities curve for Italy is provided. Let's say that Italy hires American workers to come make cars in their factories, reducing car production time by 33%. Italy is gaining resources in the form of American auto workers, but these American workers are only working in factories making cars, not motorcycles. What this means is that Italy's ability to produce motorcycles will not change, but its ability to produce cars will increase. And so the PPC will shift outward towards cars only, and Italy will see an increase in its capacity to produce automobiles. Let's do another. Provided is the PPC for Brazil. Let's say that a new coffee craze causes demand for coffee beans in Brazil to skyrocket. Social needs have changed, and Brazilians want more coffee. With an ability to produce coffee and bananas, Brazil should begin to allocate its resources towards coffee production and away from banana production to meet the needs of society. In addition, there's been no change in any of the three determinants of PPCs, meaning there's not going to be a shift in the Brazilian production's possibilities curve. Instead, Brazil is going to move from combination B to combination A, where it will produce less bananas and more coffee. In our new example, a production possibilities curve is provided for the United States. Let's say the president signs a bill making community college tuition free, causing many workers to take classes to attain new skills. With cheaper education, a larger percentage of the workforce will now be able to attain new skills and become more productive. With a more productive workforce, the United States is going to be able to produce more goods and services, and therefore will see an increase in its capacity to produce, meaning that its PPC will shift outward. Let's do another. Provided is the PPC for Mexico. Let's say that a crash of the Mexican stock market causes firms to terminate millions of workers. It seems like Mexico is going through an economic downturn. And if workers are losing their jobs by the millions, that means that unemployment is rising. Mexican workers cannot find jobs because there's none available for them. And so their labor is going to waste. This wasted labor represents productive inefficiency. And as a result, Mexico is now going to produce inside its production possibilities curve at point C. Let's do one more. Provided is the production possibilities curve for the country of Iraq. Let's say that the world enacts an embargo against Iraq after it illegally invades its neighbor Kuwait. This is exactly what happened in the Persian Gulf War. As punishment for its illegal invasion of Kuwait, all trade with Iraq is being cut off, meaning Iraq does not have the same access it used to to important resources and materials. As a result, Iraq is going to see a decrease in its capacity to produce, and its production possibilities curve is going to shift inward. Now I will kill you until you die from it. Okay, it's time for a quick review of today's major points. A production possibilities curve is a visual representation of all the combinations of goods and services that a country can produce given its resources. Production possibility points on the PPC represent productive efficiency. Points inside the PPC represent productive inefficiency. Points outside the PPC represent room for future growth, because those points currently cannot be attained with the given amount of resources available. An outward bowing PPC represents increasing opportunity cost. A straight negatively slow PPC represents constant opportunity cost. Can a PPC shift? Yes. A PPC will only shift with a change in resource quantity or quality, a change in technology, and a change in trade. An outward shift of the PPC represents economic growth and an ability to produce more. 
An inward shift of the PPC represents economic contraction, meaning the country cannot produce as much as it used to, even at full capacity. Thank you for joining me today. I'll see you next time on Intro to Macro.